Paul Salvacore. A highly sought after game fish in New England. Got another Albion. Trash fish in Florida. Ow. Many anglers oh, lose their jobs, wives, relationships, even their homes in the pursuit of hoping to catch Second. one of these beautiful, no, majestic there, creatures. Mike here, we're going to show you today how to go down and catch uh, one of the most elusive game fish, false albacore, or as we like to call them around here, cores. So we're going to go chasing some cores. We got our uh, favorite essential here. I have my Shimano uh, Slam, uh, Slam Spammer 5000. I got my uh, Shimano uh, Slam Spammer here 5000. Uh, we got 50 pound Power Pro uh, Daiwa braid. Um, we got our Pogi uh, Epoxy 3000s on there, and uh, I think it's about yeah, about six and a half foot uh, ultra fast action uh, slammer stick. Um, we also went down to our local uh, shop and uh, we got a couple uh, deadly dicks and uh, some more pogey poxies. And uh, this is the uh, the Albi meth color. And uh, you know, you can really tell which fish have uh, been slamming them by the, the discoloration in their teeth. So um, we're gonna go down. Uh, the bite's pretty good. There's cores all over the pa uh, place. There's slamming anchovies everywhere. And uh, we'll see what we can get into. All right, so we're down here at Montauk, uh, the end, one of the best, uh, most well-renowned uh, places for algae fishing around. We got our Pokey Poxy 5000 uh, Crack Edition. Um, and what we're gonna do, so what you wanna do when you're fishing here is you wanna whale it out as far as you can, all right? Now there's a couple different important steps. There's, we'll go through, there's three processes. There's the cast, there's the stance, and then there's the retrieve, all right? So we'll start off with the cast. So with the cast, just like that, butter, all right? You want it to slam down there, and you want it to, uh, that was easily about, probably about 200 yards, no problem, okay? So again, you want to whale it, whale it out there as hard as you can, all right? So next is the stance. Now this is very important because you're not going to properly hook fish if you don't stand right, all right? So what you're going to want to do is after you whale it out there, you know, easy couple hundred yards, no problem. You're going to immediately want to get that line tight. Now, what you do is the first step is you kind of hunch over a little bit, right? That's because you're in the zone. You want people to know you're a serious algae fisherman. Second thing you do is you stick your ass out like that. Um, again, I don't know what the exact reasoning of that part is, but everyone seems to do it. So I don't know if maybe it attracts the albies, but you kind of want to arch your back while you're doing it too. Kind of like, kind of like a cat, essentially. I, I think it has something to do with like, you know, kind of the flexibility. I think it helps when it comes to hooking up fish. You'll miss less uh, strikes. So again, what you do is you lean in, you stick your ass out, and that's that, okay? Now the last part, probably the most important thing, is the retrieval, all right? Now when it comes to retrieving an epoxy jig, the faster it is, the better, all right? Preferably, you don't even want it in the water. You wanna be reeling it as fast as you can to where it's actually above the water, kind of fluttering like a butterfly. And the albies will see that and they'll come out and they'll grab it. It's one of the most spectacular strikes you'll ever see, all right? But so to get an idea, what we do is again, Couple hundred yard cast, right? No problem. And then what you want to do is, again, assume the position and then reel that son of a bitch in like there's a fucking dinosaur or a dragon behind it, right? And you want to reel it in like that. You want to get that rod tip going, okay? And what that's doing is that's giving it action. Again, if it's preferably not even in the water, if it's just there above it, if you have that much tension, then that's perfect. So again, I'll just demonstrate it one more time. So again, what you want to do is get that position and you just want to really crank that thing in there as fast as you can, just like that. There you go. Oh, see right there. We just had a hit just like that. No problem. All right. So now if you're out there and you ever see these fish blow up, all right, you would think you'd want to be quiet and kind of not alert anyone around. But what you want to do is you want to yell. You want to go, oh, like that, you know, or maybe like, there they are, there they are. 
You know, yell as loud as you can, because so, you really want everyone to, to kind of know, and know that you're the first one to see him. And immediately what you do is, you wail that cast, and you get in the position, and you start reeling, all right? Oh, just like that. You know, you really want to let everybody know if there's any fish around, if they hit your lure. Even if you don't, and you think it was a cocktail bluefish, you could be like, oh, dude, that was a 15 pound core right there. He was, he came up right behind it, and he smacked it, but he spit it. And that's okay, it's gonna happen. Just know that the cores are gonna come through again and you're probably gonna crush them, all right? But uh, as long as people see that you hooked up, that's probably the most important thing of the matter, all right? And now obviously you're gonna be down with your boys, you know, you've been sipping cores light all day. You've been watching the cores coming up and crush. So every once in a while you get excited and it's okay. So what you can do is when they start coming in, you start doing a chant, you can start going, Albies, 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 Albies. Like that, you know? Just essentially let everybody know you're around that you're a serious albacore fisherman, you know? So what you want to do when you hook that fish, you want to have a catchphrase. You can do something like this. I'll be on, baby! You can always try out another one. And you got that fish. Now what you want to do is when you're fighting this fish, you want to be applying pressure, all right? You're going to hear that drag screaming. You want to, what you want to do is you want to lift and you want to bend. You want to lift and you want to bend like that, all right? Okay, now when you want when you go to land these fish, you would think it'd be a good idea to kind of have somebody grab the rod for you and you climb down. No, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to just lift these fish out of the water by their jaw. They can handle it. They're strong fish, and uh, just kind of lift them up and in a hard motion, kind of slam them down on the rocks, Ugh. like so, just like that. All right. So when you're going to unhook the fish, what you're gonna want to do is. You're gonna wanna get those pliers in there and you're really gonna, gonna wanna jam it out, all right? You know, cause we're using treble hooks here and sometimes you really, <clears throat> gotta get that hook out, but it's important to save the uh, hoagies, you know? And don't worry about stepping on the fish if you have to because uh, they're pretty resilient fish, you know? They can handle it. I mean, really put your pressure, your weight on there. You don't want them flopping around. They can hurt themselves if they go flopping around on the rocks, you know? So it's better to put some pressure on them and make sure that they don't go anywhere. With the fish on the rocks, I, I kind of forgot to grab my phone from the truck. So it'll be all right. They can stay out of water for a couple minutes. So I'm, I'm just going to go run and grab my phone real quick. It's Second photo included with a map how to get here, alright? Alright, cool, cool. Alright, bro, photo shoot time. Come on, let's get it. Woo! Oh, yeah. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. You got, you got the shot, bro? Oh, no, let me get some more. Let's get some more. You got the shot? I love you. Yeah. Yeah, is that good? Okay, That's the down, shit. Looking down the barrel of a 12 ways, a little tuning, bro. You got, you got the shot, bro? You got the shot? You got it. Alright, alright. All right. All right, so when you're ready to release this thing, holy shit, this thing's fucking still going. I thought it'd be dead by now, to be honest with you. But when you're going to release this thing, you want to chuck them about as hard as you can into the water. You kind of want to football chuck them, you know? So what you want to do is, you want to get them, and you want to just chuck them like that, all right? Now, don't worry if they uh, they hit the rocks at all. They're really hard fish, all muscle. They'll just bounce right off of that thing, do a couple somersaults, land in the air, right? And if you see them floating around for a little bit, that's all right. They usually take a couple minutes to get their breath, you know? Just give them time, they'll do their thing. And uh, yeah, they just like to take a little nap after we catch them, you know? So again, what you do is you take it and you football chuck it in like that, all right? As hard as you can, literally as hard as you can. I mean, I want you to physically be winded after you throw these fish back in the water, right? It's the only way to get the water flowing through their gills, right? Otherwise you got a dead fish on your hand and I'll call you out on Facebook for it. All right, so now one little last known thing about these fish. They are unbelievable to eat. Now, we release that fish because I'm a conservationist, all right? I'm a catch and releaser, all right? That's what I do. And I always make sure the fish go back healthy, all right? Catch and release, you put them in, back in the water, you get your Instagram fix, 
picks, you know, and you get your fame for the day. But what you can do is you can eat these fish. Now, there's a couple important things. Uh, obviously, what you want to do is you're going to want to bleed them. So what that means is you walk up to the nearest fly fisherman near you and you jam a, a knife right into the back of this thing and you let that blood just start squirting out all over the place, preferably in the guy's face, you know? It's it's a good, it's always funny to watch them see, you know, squirt them. They're, you know, I call them the fairy fly guys, you know, they're over there ooh, waving their rods around. They don't know what the fuck they're doing, you know? I'm over here slamming poxy pogies on the fucking cores. They're crushing them left and right, you know, greenbacks jumping out. So again, what you do is you want to take that knife, you want to get it in there and you just want to kind of jam it around the back, get all that blood flowing out. Uh, then what you want to do is you want to leave it out in the sun on the rocks for a couple hours. That lets the meat kind of get tight and let it get all nice and like kind of pre-cook it a little bit. And then the last thing you do is you go down to your local stop and shop, get a little soy sauce wasabi and you just fucking, you take that fillet knife, you right through it, you get a couple nice chunks and you just eat it raw, just like that. All right. Um, if you start feeling sick, you know, you think you're going to vomit, that's probably because you're a pussy and you can't handle a, a man's fish like an albacore. Um, it's the same shit you get in the fucking tuna cans minus the dolphins is really all it is. So, uh, so yeah, if, if you ever see somebody saying, oh, you can't eat them, why are you keeping these fish? You just pretty much just spit in their face is all you really need to do. That or, you know, maybe slap them in the side of your head with your pogey jig or something like that. And they'll get the idea, you know. A lot of people don't know, man, those albacore finger licking fucking good all right you're going to be going back for more and more uh again though you may get sick i'm just warning you they're basically not edible so hey guys you know as uh hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about crushing cores um this october november uh get out there on the inlets fucking go slam them um make sure to uh tag me in any photos you got uh hashtag slamming cores on the back and um just a little side note, if you're ever taking photos, all right, make sure you have something in the background that people can notice where you're fishing. Uh, it's really important because what happens is if you don't post a specific location of where you caught that fish, uh, you're more likely to actually have people there uh, at the spot the next day. Because if you post a photo with that background image, what they're gonna do is they're gonna know that's your turf, all right? And they're gonna stay away. Because they look at you and they see one bad motherfucker, all right? Like, you got these fucking things flying around, you know what I mean? We're fucking slamming fish, we're going, Skrrr. You know, we essentially look like gang members at this point with all these colors. And that's kind of why we do this, you know, kind of make us stick out, you know, make sure people know not to fucking fish our area. All right. So, uh, so that's all again, uh, go sub to my YouTube channel. Uh, we're trying to fucking monetize it. I'm going to put like 10 ads in the middle of each fucking 30 minute long video, barely edit it, you know, um, follow me on SoundCloud. Uh, I do some fucking, uh, hip hop, uh, Albi songs. Um, Make sure you uh, check my LinkedIn profile and uh, add me on MySpace, all right? And uh, until next time, guys, we'll see you. And as always, slam it, go!